to this service of worship at First United Methodist Church of Dardanelle. I'm Jim Benford, the pastor of the church, and I'm glad that you've joined us this day to worship the God who loves us with an intense love. I want to take the time to invite you to be present with us in our live worship services. We have live worship at 1055 on Sunday mornings. We have 945 a.m. Uh, Bible school and Sunday school classes on Sunday mornings as well as Wednesday evening activities beginning at 6 o'clock for adults and youth. If you would like to contact the church, we invite your visit to us at our office, 8.30 to 2.30, uh, Mondays through Fridays, or you can call our office at 479-229-3720. We invite you also to visit to see what other resources we have on this website at fumcdardanelle.org. And you can see other videos from past worship services or our children's videos uh, by checking in at our website or go to our Facebook or YouTube page. We invite you to be with us in the life, mission, and ministry of our church. We are the people of God, sharing the love of God, and offering His grace to the world around us. As we go to God now, we start our worship together in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal Father, join us ministering to hearts and minds and bodies. We all bring different uh, thoughts. We all bring different needs in, into worship. We ask that by the power of your spirit, you minister to each of us, lifting us up by the power of your healing grace and love to be filled with your power and energy to go out and share your love with this world. We pray all of this now in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin our worship together, going uh, to affirm our faith in God. We'll use the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version today. I believe in God the Father Almighty. maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we continue in our worship, we go to God to lift up the names of those that uh, we have on our prayer list. We know that you want to probably add some of your own uh, in silent praise and uh, in silent prayer for those that uh, have needs. Let me list a few of the names. We're still praying for the J.C. Scott family and the loss of J.C. We're praying for Catherine Combs, Martha Reed, George Parrish, Buster Berryhill, Chris Merritt, William Ellis, Ron Merritt, Barbara Pfeiffer, Pat Crabtree, Dwight Atkinson, Bud Choate, Steve Lawrence, Kathleen Balloon, and of course all of those who are nursing home or homebound residents. As we go to God now in prayer, we go silently first. I, as I always do, I ask that we would go to God listening for his will and way being spoken into our own living. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for the opportunity to open our hearts and minds to you. We ask you to speak your wisdom into our living, that truly we might praise you and that we might be about your will continuously. So help us to be on those paths that uh, are illuminated by your word. Help us that uh, we might be the arms and feet of Jesus continuing in the world here by the power of your spirit. A force of good to bring about change, to bring about justice, to bring relief to those who are distressed, and that we might bring words of hope and comfort to those that don't yet know your kingdom. We know that we have uh, often failed as your children, so we ask your uh, forgiveness that we might uh, be uh, made clean once again from our sins, that we might be uh, close to your presence in mind and in heart so that we might do your will and become obedient to your word. So hear our prayers for those that uh, we lift up silently and out loud. We pray for the leaders of this nation and all nations that they might bow the knee to you, that they might come to you in prayer for wisdom and counsel and that your will might be made manifest in the hearts of those who lead our nations so that there might be peace and not war, that there might be trust and faith instead of fear and loathing. So Lord, help us that we might be a people who lift up the Christ as a symbol of the hope of all humanity, for you have created us to bless and not to curse. So help us that we might be peoples, especially in this nation that we ask you to bless today. Father, we also stop and pause for a moment to remember the lives of those who died in the service of this country to keep us free, to give us the ability to worship together. We pray for their families who also suffered loss, that they might be held in your arms of comfort. So help us together today as we pray now that prayer Jesus taught his own disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings at this time. And for those of you who join us by video, we offer that opportunity through the PayPal tab on our website. We hope that you'll go there and look for that. Or you can send uh, a, a check in to the church to support the life and the mission and the ministry of our church in our community and the world around us. 
that address appears as uh, the doxology uh, is sung after the offertory. Let's consecrate our gifts together now in prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we come to you with hands often uh, not as open as yours, for truly you have blessed us with one gift after another. As we seek to be your children, help us to live thankfully and generously so that this world might encounter your kingdom, that we might be the ones who bring uh, relief and restitution to those whose lives have been injured and harmed in the uh, ways of this world. So bless these gifts and the givers this morning that truly these things might be ordained for your purposes. We give our thanks and we give our praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. like to join me in scripture this morning we're going to the psalms to psalm 47 this morning it is a psalm of praise to the lord and it brings many things within it to help us in our own worship of god listen to god's word clap your hands all you nations shout to god with cries of joy he is awesome the lord almighty the king over all the earth he subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the peoples of the God of Abraham, for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we search your word this morning, help us to be a people of praise that in all things we above all peoples on this earth, might exalt your name. This is our prayer. We offer it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, when we think about the psalm that we've just read this morning, it is a psalm that exalts God. And we want to shout to the Lord. I hope you want to shout to the Lord because we serve a mighty God. If there's anything that I do from this pulpit, I hope that it is that I boast about what a great and wonderful God that we've got and the blessings that he pours out upon his children. Now I've got a little story I found. It's uh, about a farmer who went out late one evening to go to his pond. He hadn't been there in a while. And so he grabbed a piece of fruit in a five gallon bucket he, he went off to the pond, and as he neared the pond, he heard some voices shouting and laughing with glee. He came closer, and he saw that it was a bunch of women skinny, skinny dipping in the pond. Well, he cleared his voice <clears throat> and made his presence known to those women, and they all swam quickly to the deep end of the pond. One of the women shouted at him, We're not coming out until you leave. The old man frowned. He said, I didn't come here to watch you ladies swim naked or get out of the pond naked. He held up the bucket high and he said, I came here to feed the alligator. <laughs> you see, some people are always shouting about the wrong things. But fortunately for us, we as God's people have something to shout about. Our psalm speaks of it. What a great and mighty God that we serve. You know, the psalmist has put his finger on the exact thing that we need to shout about. When we shout, it ought to be in praise for the great God that we love and serve. Now, there's a few faith lessons I'd like 
to take out of this psalm. It's very simple, but these lessons don't have to be complicated for us to get deep understanding. The first faith lesson is that God is to be praised. Friends, the first line of this psalm is an invitation to acknowledge God's sovereignty. That's an old word. We don't use it very much anymore. But it means that God's in control. He gives the orders. He is the king of all creation. Now we can turn our heads and turn our backs and ignore God, but that's foolishness, you see. Because God is sovereign. He made us and we are accountable to that God. I'm pretty sure that the fact that God is sovereign escapes many people today. You know, we need to understand that we have an obligation to the one who gave us life, who gives us breath, and who calls us to bless one another. The fact remains that people, though, are not praiseworthy. So many times we spend our time praising the wrong things. And people are not praiseworthy. Now, some people have done some great things, and yes, that excites us, but there is a God who gave them the talents, who made them seemingly praiseworthy. Oh, we may do some things that are noble from time to time, but our little forays into honor should always be muted by the errors into sin and shame that we indulge ourselves in. No, we are not praiseworthy, but our scripture speaks of a God who is praiseworthy. God created all that we enjoy, all that we're in awe of, and we are all a part of that creation. Our humble footnote is that we were created from the dirt. Now think about that for a minute. So yes, we're to praise the only God, the one God, the, the mighty and magnificent God who created us and the beautiful creation around us and the universe far and vast beyond it. We owe God not just our lives, but the fact that he considered it important enough that we should be created with communion for such a divine being as he. And we were created to find joy in sharing this good life with God and with others that we have been put into. We have life and it should become a call upon us to live it worthy to the calling of the one who created us and put us here. Now often we think we're in charge of our life. We'll do as we please. But friends, that's to ignore the sovereign God who made us, who has called upon our lives and who expects us to glorify him through our own living. We have a God who is to be praised. The second faith lesson is that God is to be exalted. Again, I'm using theological words that we often hear in praise songs. Uh, it gets used in seminaries, but we don't use the word exalt very much in our day-to-day -day, uh, language, do we? We often don't even understand it. But to be exalted is to be lifted up as something that is superior. We can also think of it as making something or someone bigger than us. More important than we are. This is how we exalt God. We make sure we magnify God's name and God's presence in our lives. For he is greater than we are. In so many ways in our society and in Christian thinking today... God is not exalted. For instance, many people are proud to profess that Jesus Christ is their personal Lord and Savior. Now think about that statement for just a moment. There's a little bit of arrogance in that statement. And it sounds arrogant. As if Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Somehow or another making it uh, like Jesus is somehow uh, my servant, my errand boy, my somehow or another, uh, at my command. But that's not the way that it is. Lord means master. And sometimes we don't interpret that word Lord like that. It'd be better if we chose to say, I am the servant of Christ who humbled himself so that he could save a worm like me. Psalm 47 is important because it helps us in our own proclamation of God's sovereignty. God is to be exalted because we're nothing, and God is everything. Our profession is that God is to be exalted. And folks, that should not come into direct conflict with a world 
that somehow or another doesn't understand God. But it has to in this world because this world is fallen. This world is full of sin. And sin means that we defy God, that we don't obey God, that we take what God has told us to do and we don't do that. And that's what sin is. It's our refusal to be obedient and humble before God. Our world is in the business of exalting those who are brash, bold, rich, beautiful, powerful, even insulting. Such are the foolish ways of people who will not exalt the everlasting God. Friends, we don't have life in and of ourselves. God is more than just the ground of our being. He spoke us into being. He spoke all that is into being. And we exist by the power of his word. It's not a mistake that we take up this song today because it's been used for centuries by the church on Ascension Sunday. Now friends, we come together on Memorial Day Sunday as well. We could take our time together today reading from Acts or Luke or about Jesus' ascension back into heaven or even the celebration of the disciples in their excitement. But I want our focus back where it needs to be on God who is our sovereign. Our worship ought to include a moment every Sunday where we rejoice, not just like a bunch of petrified bench warmers, but people joyous about the almighty God whose spirit has come down to make them more than they were before, who has lifted them up from the miry pit and has saved them. We owe much to God, more than we can repay. Therefore, turn with me in your hymnals to number 781, where we again find a responsive reading of Psalm 47. Now, for those of you on video, you probably don't have a hymnal to open up this morning, but just listen again to the response of this psalm as we go back and forth. And, and just imagine in this video that we are going back and forth. Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great ruler over all the earth, who subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet, who chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our ruler, sing praises. For God is ruler of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. Friends, that psalm isn't long, but it is a praise to the sovereign God who loved us enough to send Jesus Christ to redeem us. And we rejoice today because we have a Lord and a Savior who cared for us, who loved us more than life itself and came to redeem us. Friends, we have a God of great love and great power. And he is highly to be exalted, to praised, to be magnified above all. The last faith lesson is that the earth too is the Lord's. Perhaps this point seems altogether obvious because the Psalm has stated this at least three different times. And perhaps this point needs to be repeated more times because, friends, we don't own anything. We may think that we own things because we've got a title or a deed or, or some kind of a document that has been given us where we have paid for something. But we forget that all that we think that we possess still is God's property. It is being temporarily put into our hands for the use of leveraging God's kingdom, to magnify God's name, to bring joy to us and to other people. Now, if we stop and do just a little more thinking about the earth belonging to God, we might also come to some conclusions about our actions that we haven't properly thought through very well. For instance, when we, we mistreat the land by polluting it or restricting it from its proper role, 
We have not insulted those who might have been harmed as much as we have insulted the real owner of that property, who is God. When we enforce borders by saying, this land is ours, how arrogant we must be. We've forgotten who it is that blessed us by allowing us to possess it. When we make war on other nations, we forget that we are all losers because we are brothers and sisters and God the father of each one. Friends, I don't say these things by way of trying to make some kind of a political statement for or against any leader or party, but I say them because God's word stands witness between God and each one of us. Have we really praised God through our living? Have we truly been joyous and made God glorified in that which we have done? Or have we exalted ourselves? And finally, have we recognized God's ownership and authority throughout all of the earth? Or have we darker thinking, which is regarded as something to be fought over and hoarded for ourselves? These are all pertinent questions to consider this morning as we sit before God whose throne is in the heavens above. You know, it is only because of God's love and great power that we have been given the gift of life through Jesus Christ. He has planted his spirit deep within our own spirits that we might begin to learn and to understand and grow as God's children. Our Lord has proved his love and power through his sacrificial death and his resurrection so that he might give God's children hope that we might magnify and exalt the God who truly is great and highly to be praised. Then he ascended back up to that throne in heaven and there forever and ever will be praised. Friends, on this day, above any other day, let us remember who it is that we magnify, who it is that we serve, and who it is that we owe so much to. May we then love with the greatest love ever and exalt the God who has loved us so much. Let it be so for you and for me. Let us live thankfully, praise uh, filled lives so that God is exalted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a glad thought, some wonderful morning, just to hear Gabriel's trumpet sound. When I wake up, when I wake up to sleep, sleep no more, rising to meet our blessed Redeemer, with a glad shout I'll leave the ground. When I when I wake up to sleep no more When I wake up Some glad morning Sleep no more Jewels at dawn How happy I'll be Over in glory Beautiful show Telling a story With the redeemed of all the ages Praising the one who I adore When I wake up When I wake up to sleep no more To God, I'll have a new body Changed in the twinkling of an eye When I wake up When I wake up to sleep no more Leaving behind no troubles and trials Bound for the sea up on high When I wake up When I wake up to sleep no more When I wake up Some glad morning sleep no more Jewels at dawn How happy I'll be Over in glory Telling the story with the redeemed of all the ages Praising the one whom I adore When I wake up When I wake up to sleep no more When I wake up Some glad morning sleep no more Jewels adorn How happy I'll be Over in glory Telling the story with the redeemed of all the ages Praising the one whom I adore When I wake up when I wake up to sleep no more When I wake up When I wake up to sleep no more Friends, I want to thank you for joining us for worship today.
our lesson was simple today, but it reminds us of something that so often escapes us, that God is sovereign. He is to be exalted and highly to be praised. May we live then in such a manner that our lives become praiseworthy so that we might point at the one who we should glorify, Christ our Savior, the God of all the nations. May we remember that he has loved us not because we're perfect, but even in spite of our sin. So go and share his praise, his worthy name with others. Amen.